What's up guys? This is Andrew Smursek with Combat Air Train. Today I got something pretty cool to show you. Normally I'm not excited about guns because I grew up with them, I was in the military, you know, went to other countries, saw their stuff, and you know, worked in a gun shop for a year and a half. I'm RSOing and teaching classes out at Area Training Facility. I've pretty much seen everything I've wanted to see. But I do have a special place in my heart for AKs. You'd be like, yo, I got this Liz Bang AR, and I'd be like, cool man. But it's just another AR. AKs have a lot of history to them. They are uh, widely misunderstood. There's a lot of myths and misconceptions about them. Uh, we'll talk about that in future videos. But they're also just cooler. They're more gangster. And there's a lot of haters for AKs. Um, and you pretty much see everyone running an AR. But you gotta be a little bit more badass to run an AK. And I've been looking to get a Zestavity M70 uh, ZPAP for classes because as far as I've seen, it's the 16 inch AK to get right now. Best value, um, even the ones like wood on them. It's a higher quality wood from what I've seen. And I haven't seen anything bad about it. Rob Ski ran it for 5,000 rounds, he likes it. And you know, I had a Wasser uh, before, a Wasser 10, new production, I like that but I wanted to try out this new one. So, I was dropping off some slings at Pearson's Gun Shop, A.W. Pearson's Gun Shop, link below, and uh, I asked if they had a Zasava M70, M70, but they said, no, we did just get an AK pistol. And I know, I just made a video on barrel length uh, for rifles, and I said, you don't need a super short gun. And I was like, all right, I'll check it out. And what they had was this motherfucker right here. Check that out. Now. You may think that you've seen this before, but as far as I've seen, you haven't. Because I haven't seen this for sale anywhere, and I haven't seen a video about it, so I'm kinda hoping that this is the first video to go out about it, and I'm gonna do a lot of videos about this rifle specifically. And yeah, it's a fucking rifle. I don't care what the ATF says, they don't know anything. But, <clears throat> why is this new? Why have you not seen this before? The reason being is this, AK has the bulge front trunnion, and the 1.5 millimeter receiver, the RPK style receiver and trunnion, which Atlantic Farms did just put out uh, videos about um, ZPAP M92s like this, but they weren't the tactical model. So as far as I've seen, this is the first time anyone is seeing the tactical model uh, out on the internet, unless I'm wrong. Um, go ahead, comment below if I am. But <clears throat> yeah, man, I'm psyched about this and this, rifle is going to be getting run through a lot of classes. Um, I'm going to try to get out some uh, more instructors areas that I personally want to train with and I'll you know let you guys know about that in the future. But it's also going to be my vehicle gun. So like I said, that is a time where you do want a small rifle. I'm also going to see what types of bags this will fit in. This is all videos that will come in the future. Get a 20 round mag and see if I can come up with a good um, bag that I could keep this in and it would still be discreet. So for places where you're not supposed to have a rifle, they could still bring one with you. Now, let's talk about the features. What we have on here, uh, starting at the butt, is a uh, SBA3 brace, which is basically the uh, M4 style telescoping stock, but it's a brace, and different positions on there. That's cool. It's not a uh, folding brace. Uh, I don't really see the need to make it a folder. I think this is playing small um, and putting extra money into doing that really is just adding more parts, uh, things that can go wrong and where I could just get a bag that fits it. Next, let's look at the dust cover. It's the uh, type of dust cover where it's hinged right here. So for you people who don't know how to take apart and reassemble an AK, that will be nice because normally on AKs you have to push in the front of the dust cover, line it up right here, and then press it down. But this one's just hinged right there so you don't have to worry about that. And when you close them, don't fucking smack them. You can actually dig up your dust cover, bend it, and um, screw up your rifle like that. Just press it down, right? If you need to feel good about it, give a little tug back up. Now on the dust cover, <clears throat> it has um, two, 
200 meter marking on the site and then uh, oh that's the 400 <laughs> the 200 meter one and then the 400 so crink off style and then they also put on this rail right here picatinny rail um so you mount an optic and one thing we'll do with that too is we'll put a red dot on it and we'll open and close it a whole bunch we'll take the red dot off put it back on uh we'll see how well it maintains zero when i do that now going down the safety has that um bolt hold open feature right there so you just rack it back and then you push the thing up and it'll catch like that and then we release it it will uh send the bolt home which i don't really care about that it's not a feature i've ever given a shit about um if you wanted a cooler safety you get the krebs one where you can initiate like this but honestly ak safeties are fine don't worry about that don't overthink it now old m92s <clears throat> had this issue with them, the ones that were imported by Century, where if you were putting downward pressure on the charging handle, you wouldn't be able to pull it back, right? So you'd have to put upward pressure before you could rack it back. This one doesn't have that issue. Um, I've been running the action like crazy since I got it, um, you know, practicing reloads and just working and feeling out the gun. Uh, initially, it did have the, the thing where if you pull it back and then slowly let it go, it would get hung up, but now it doesn't have that issue. And even if your rifle has that issue, the way to solve it is don't fucking ride the charging handle forward and eject your port down, ride it hard to the rear, all the way, let it go, okay? So not an issue even if uh, it is an issue for you. Also, I got the chrome plated uh, bolt carrier right there, and we'll do uh, another video where we take it apart, all that stuff. Now let's feel out the trigger. So. First, I'll take out the uh, slack that is my muscle on my finger compressing. All right, my finger is compressed. Now we're gonna start moving the trigger mechanically. Now we will reset. Okay. Trigger feels really nice, uh, and when I go up to the point of reset, it kind of bumps up a little bit. Right there, and then as I press down, there's like a distinctive point where I can feel I'm about to break the shot. So I press down. Right there, so just for that point. I can feel it, I can feel it. So. Uh, seems pretty nice. Uh, I don't fucking care about fancy triggers, so I'm just gonna run this one as long as it works I'm gonna be happy with it <laughs> All my guns have mil spec triggers in them even my SPR and that's the only one where I'd really say hey Maybe we should put a nicer trigger in it. I'm fine with mil spec. If you don't have training don't buy a fucking fancier trigger now <clears throat> moving forward we have a quad rail on here, which I'm not sure if these screws are Loctited down. I might just take them out and Loctite them um, to make sure that they're good to go, or I'll run it real hot. We'll just see what happens. Uh, but yeah, looks like it's very nicely made. It's from Zestava USA. It has a marking right there. Get in focus, buddy. Marking right there. And they have the um, markings to go along the rail in case you like to take shit off and put it back on. And then they put on this um, this angled foregrip right here, which I like that it has this, so you can put your finger, your index finger on there and pull it back, um, which some people think is kind of scary because they like to use it a hand stop so their hand doesn't go forward, but whenever I'm holding a rifle, I'm pulling back with my left arm. I know there's another technique where you pull this way with your firing hand and then push forward with your other hand. I do that with shotguns, but with a rifle, I just pull it straight in. Um, this this feels nice, uh, pretty minimalistic, and the, it gets screwed in right there and there. Um, how much is all that way? I don't know. Do pull-ups and squats, and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, next, looking at the front sight, <clears throat> try to get that in focus for you too. All right, all right. It seems good to go. I don't see any crazy glue coming out or anything like that. And then it also has this flip up portion where I push that up and it's got a dot, which I imagine is for shooting at night. However, it does not glow in the dark. Then we got the CNC Warrior brake 
on it, uh, the night brake, which has a big open port on the side, and then it's a three prong flash hider. Now with the gun um, came this magazine, which according to, I believe Atlantic Firearms, they said it does have seal and reinforcements. I'll do another video on AK mags. Um, but it's a bolt hold open, fits in real nicely. Now when I insert, there's a little bit of wobble front uh, and back, which I like, and a little bit of side wobble, which I also like. Now, bolt hold open mag means that when I rack it back, ah, fuck. When I rack it back, it stays stuck in the open position, and when you release the mag, bolt will go home. Now, I also picked up um, four of these Croatian mags from my buddy Cody at Cabra Arms. I'll put a link down there for him, too. Uh, he's in Dade City, so if you're close to Dade City, go stop by. These mags, uh, I believe they're steel, maybe they're aluminum, but um, lots of wobble. And these also bolt hold open. You got four of these, so we'll see how they all run. Whoop. All right, all fit nicely. Now we'll try a uh, tap coat, which I do not recommend, but you know, some people have them. Tap coat goes in. Um, pretty sticky and not a lot of wobble. Now, next we have the P-Mag. I generally don't like P-Mags. Now this is an early one that came out before there were seal reinforcements on the uh, front and back lugs. Um, and I know James Yeager likes them, so I'd give him another shot. But in general, if I can get like a steel mag that works well, that's inexpensive, I'd rather stick with that. But let's just see how it fits. Um, like I said, I don't like them because when I worked in the store, every time I put in an AK, and there's mostly Century AKs, they'd be super tight to get in and a pain in the dick to get out. This one, it actually goes in very nicely. Now these are not bolt hold open, as you can see, but it fits in really nicely. A little bit of wobble front and back. Mm, not hardly any side wobble, but it, it gets in there um, nicely no real hang up. Now, other things it came with was, uh, I think it's a 16 inch cleaning rod, cool. And then a uh, manual, which looking at it briefly, it did seem like it had a lot of good information in there. I think there's some stuff about zeroing, clean, yep, sight adjustment, ammunition, all that. Uh, so that's cool, maybe I'll do a video about that. If you want that, just comment below. Um, also, good news is that Eagle Industries uh, two by two M4 pouches do fit AK mags, so that's gonna work nicely on my drop leg rig, and that's another reason that I would say don't go with Kydex mag pouches for your belt. Um, then, coming up, I'm going to modify this to be a better rig, putting um, better flaps on it, put molly on the sides, attach a med kit. I'm gonna turn this into an H harness, so uh, stay tuned for that in the future. Also, coming up in the future, um, Next video, I'm gonna use this sling and this hardware to, um, to mount this sling. But I'm gonna show you guys how to mount a sling on an AK. We'll do it with this one, and I'll do it with another one. Um, if you guys wanna help support this channel, buy rifle slings uh, from me, sign up for classes, share these videos, like these videos. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe, because I got a lot of cool videos coming up about this rifle specifically. Um, but hey guys, everyone that's been helping me out, I greatly appreciate it. Another thing I really want to do too, is I want to put a lot of rounds to this. I want to see what the accuracy looks like at greater distances. I can shoot out to about 850 yards at um, Aries, but first I want to see if I can push it to 400. Um, I've got it, I think it was like 300 we were making accurate hits at with uh, my buddy's Galil Ace. So I want to try it with this gun right here. Beat the shit out of it. If you guys want to shoot this gun, um, come out to Aries Training Facility, but if you want to really run it, sign up for a class, you're welcome to run my guns free of charge. I don't charge for gun rentals, so just bring good ammo. Of course, you can use steel case with this. There's no fucking reloads. Um, but yeah, everyone who's been uh, watching, liking, commenting, uh, all my subscribers, I appreciate you guys. Everyone who's been ordering slings, I fucking greatly appreciate that. Uh, if you ordered a sling before today, I promise you that's in the mail. Um, some of the tracking, info was not able to send because the, like the website's not letting me fulfill orders but i tried to make sure that you at least got an email with the tracking number um but all that sent out now right now i have green slings available like this i've got coyote uh and i've got black 
Now again, these are mil-spec tubular nylon with all metal hardware and they're all hand sewn by me with bonded nylon thread, not the shit you get at Joann Fabrics. It has a quick adjust handle in the front to tighten it or loosen it. It pulls in the same direction as a Vickers sling if you're familiar with that. Uh, but yeah, hey, everyone who's been supporting me, everyone who's uh, buying slings, watching my videos, all my students, everyone who's been helping me out in other ways, I greatly appreciate you guys. You mean the world to me. You make this possible. So stay safe and keep fighting communism.